what is it? What what is it about humanity that that that, that wants to go to the, all the details and stuff and listen? You know, these guys like Fauci get up there and start talking. You know, he doesn't know anything really about anything, and I'd say that to his face. Nothing. The man thinks you can take a blood sample and stick it in an electron microscope, and if it's got a virus in there, you'll know it. He doesn't understand electron microscopy, and he doesn't understand medicine, and he, doesn't, he should not be in a position like he's in. Most of those guys up there on the top are just total administrative people, and they don't know anything about what's going on at the bottom. You know, those guys have got an agenda, which is not what we would like them to have, being that we pay for them to take care of our health in some way. They've got a personal kind of agenda. They make up their own rules as they go. They change them when they want to. And they smugly, like Tony Fauci, does not mind going on television in front of the people that pay his salary and lie directly into the camera. You can't expect the sheep to really respect the best and the brightest. They don't know the difference, really. I mean, I, I like humans, don't, don't get me wrong, but basically there is a, there is a, there's a vast, the vast majority of them do not possess the, the ability to judge who is and who isn't a really good scientist. I mean, that's a problem. That's a main problem, actually, with science, I'd say, in this century, because science is being judged by people. Funding is being done by people who don't understand it. Okay, who do we trust? Fauci? Fauci doesn't know enough to, you know. If Fauci wants to get on television with somebody who knows a little bit about this stuff and debate him, he could easily do it, because he's been asked. I mean, I've had a lot of people, president of the University of South Carolina, asked Fauci if he'd come down there and debate me on the stage in front of the student body, because I wanted somebody who was from the other side to come down there and balance my, because I felt like, well, these guys can listen to me, but I need to have somebody else down here that's going to tell me the other side. But Fauci didn't want to do it. That's not an epidemic. The number of cases reported went up epidemically, you know, exponentially, because the number of tests that was done went up exponentially. How many doctors knew about HIV in 1983? Two. How many knew about it in 1985? Say 500. How many knew, how many knew about it in 1986? 40,000. So that's where the curve came from. How many tests were done? Look. If it's just caused by needles, or it's just caused by homosexual activities, you're not going to really get a whole, a long, sustained public outcry against it, and nobody's going to want to spend $6 billion a year. They're going to say, well, we really didn't like those people anyhow. Great. I can't think of a better solution to the homosexual problem than a disease that'll kill them all. I mean, there would be congressmen that would talk about that quietly, not on television. So the CDC had to say, we can't say that. We've got to say it's going to be, it's got to be heterosexually transmitted. There's no proof that it's transmitted at all at that point. So why not just say, well, it's heterosexually transmitted too? Because that made it a plague, and the CDC needed one. The CDC hadn't had a good plague since polio. Their funding was probably going to be cut back if they didn't come up with one. The guy that was the head of the CDC, in fact, wrote memos that have been obtained, you know, that, where he describes this as hot stuff. You know, those guys have got an agenda, which is not what we would like them to have, being that we pay for them to take care of our health. They are, they are considered the final arbiters of what's good for the planet or what's bad for the planet. And, and they hadn't got the slightest idea. Instead of wearing white robes, they wear white lab coats, you know. Instead of like bringing you the word of God, they bring you the word of the, the EPA or whatever. And, and, and they don't have to understand what it is that they are making you do, in fact. And people, you know, just, I think they fall naturally into it because there, there is a need in, in humanity for something like a religion. So occasionally you get a false positive. Uh, under those circumstances, a Western blot can absolutely confirm. Western blots are also important when you have people, for example, who have been vaccinated in vaccine trials and making antibody against one protein. The only way you're going to tell if they're infected serologically is by looking at a Western blot showing they make antibodies to the other protein. So it has a lot of value. It's fundamentally a confirmatory diagnostic test. 
more likely to be positive there because they use much more lax criteria. I don't think that there's anything wrong with different countries having different criteria because the different criteria are, are only really for that small group of patients that come in the indeterminate level. When a Western blot is really positive, it hits you like a truck. It's only for that little indeterminate group that you have to be concerned. In theory, at least, that if you were tested in New York today, then flew to Australia, and you had three bands in New York, you would not be positive in Australia, but you would be positive in New York City. Now, I mean, a virus cannot behave in this manner. He lowered the sensitivity of the antibody test. If they didn't allow him to charge so much for it, I think there'll be a lot less use of it. You know, it's just like in political scandals. Follow the money trail. Figure out who's getting paid for this. Who's getting the money for those Western blots? There's your person who's going to always come down on the side of, yeah, you got to confirmatory Western blots, they call it. They don't even do them in England anymore. No, but not since 1992. It's, it's, it's totally... It's, and, and ask a doctor how it works. The doctor who prescribes it says, got to have a Western blot to confirm this Eliza positive thing. How does that work, doctor? Uh, sir, how, how, what, are, what are they now measuring about me that's different from what they measured with the Eliza test? He wouldn't know. He's not got any idea. I'll bet you there's scarcely... Uh, 50 physicians in this country that know what a Western blot really is. The thing that I learned like back in 1968 when I first published a paper by myself in Nature in a field that I had no expertise in at all, uh, there are no old wise men up there at the top of science. Where, which I would have, I really did until 68, I would have thought, you know, if you try to publish a dumb paper in a journal like Nature, it won't get published. If you try to publish a good paper in there, like I later tried to pu publish PCR, the invention of PCR, in the same journal, and uh, they didn't take it. So it's up there. There isn't an up there there. There's no place up on the... There's, the Academy of Science is just a bunch of idiots, just like everybody else. You know, the editors of journals, austere journals even, they're just busy with their little lives and stuff. There are no old wise men up on the top making sure that we don't do something really dumb.